video 2, variable horizontal forces. So we'll start with this one from 15E, a car of mass 1800 kgs, starts from rest, travels along a straight horizontal road, gives us a mass and also some initial conditions. V is equal to 0 when T is equal to 0 and possibly when X is equal to 0 as well. The engine of the car is working with constant power. Now if you recall, power is forced by velocity, so the driving force of the engine will be 2400 over the velocity v. If there's no resistance to the motion of the car, that means that the total force being applied to the car is 2400 over v. Find the time taken for the car to reach a speed of 20 meters per second. So time and speed means I'm going to let a equal to dv dt. And then the, the final part, the distance travelled, mean means I'm going to have to use V dV dx as well. So let's start with the diagram. And I would suggest starting with a diagram here. <clears throat> there's a block, draw the forces acting on it. It's got a mass, it's got a weight. If it's on the surface, there's a reaction up. There's a single horizontal force. And that force is given by P over V, which is 2400 over V. Now, if we apply F is equal to MA there, we get the mass by the acceleration is 2400 over v and that brings us to the first line of text f is equal to ma with the arrow um, i would have wrote it backwards 1800a for ma is equal to 2400 over v cancel the zeros isolate the a and then because we're looking for the the time taken to reach a speed let a equal to dv dt that gives me the last line there and you would probably have a constant of integration but uh, Dominic here has used the limits. So in the next step, <coughs> you solve for it and you just get a time of 150 seconds. Now the final part of the question, what's the distance travelled in this time? So we go back to the original equation, which was 1800a is equal to 2400 over v. And in this case, when we divide under by the mass we have a equals 4 over 3v, and we're looking for the distance, so let a equal to v dv ds. Rearrange, integrate, and you get s equals to 2000. All right, question four. If you want to practice, pause the video, try this, and before going forward, I'm going to keep going, however. Your first uh, step, draw a diagram. It should have a car of mass 1200, <coughs> Uh, it drives against the constant resistance of 1800 and the car engine has a constant power of 108,000 watts. Convert the power to force by dividing the number by velocity and the resistance is 1800. So the net force in this case will be the uh, 108,000 over V minus the 1800 and we're going to leave that equal to MA. Same as before, just divide both sides by 1000, get A on its own. And you get a is equal to 180 minus 3v over 2v. And now what we need to do is go on to part 2, because that's part 1 done. And it says calculate the time for the speed to increase from rest to 30. So a will be dv dt. The initial conditions v is equal to 0 and t equals 0 as well. Now what it's looking like uh, for me, the type of integration that's going to take place, Right now we can't do it, and because we have a single term in the denominator, I'd divide the 2v into the first and the second term. That's probably the quickest way of doing it. So, um, if we take their part 2, <coughs> he rearranges it uh, for on line 3, and then it says, when you rearrange it, either long division or substitution can be used. So, my previous statement was an error because it was before we rearranged it. Um, He's using long division to do it, and long division then gives you a minus two thirds and then a remainder of 120. So we put the 120 over the denominator. So you can do that or substitution. I probably would have used substitution. So let u equal to 180 minus 3v, differentiate it, and you should be able to work through that yourself. Okay, get back to me if there's any issue with it. Next question. 5e question 14. <clears throat> now I'd strongly recommend trying this first, so pause the video, but I'm going to keep going with the question itself. 
We have a gun of mass 3 tonnes, so that's 3,000 kilograms. It starts to recoil horizontally with a speed of 18 metres per second. So when t is equal to 0, the speed is 18, and x is equal to 18 there as well. Sorry, x is equal to 0 when the speed is 18 as well. The recoil is taken up by a buffer which exerts a force proportional to the distance recoiled. So the bigger the distance away from the buffer, the bigger the force exerted on it. And in this case, the gun is pushing into the buffer. So at the start, the buffer is the widest, it's the biggest distance. And if it's the biggest distance, the buffer is exerting the largest force at the start. Now the buffer brings the gun to rest in a distance of 1.5 meters. So that's when the distance is the smallest, the force will be the smallest. Then find the maximum force exerted by the buffer. And this will be when the distance is a maximum. We'll see that in a moment. Now, <clears throat> I draw a diagram here. So the diagram there, the 3000 kg is the gun. And then we have the force, which he's represented by P. Now, P is not power in this case, it's just the force. The force trying to damp the recoil of the gun. And what we have is the acceleration and that force are in opposite directions. So as a result, <coughs> The force, which is equal to m by a, which is equal to 3000 a, um, f will be equal to minus m by a, if that makes sense. Now what are we told? In the second line we're told the force is proportional to the distance recoiled, so p is proportional to x, and in the top right hand corner of the solution you see p is equal to kx, and that just shows that they're directly proportional, or that's how we write it. So f equals m a, f is p or f is equal to kx and we have kx is equal to minus 3000 a because they occur in opposite directions. Rearrange it, have the x's on one side, the, the v's and the dv's on the other and again we're using v and x because we're given the distance and we know the speed. Okay, you'd integrate it, you get a constant of integration uh, and you'd work your way through it, make a substitution, and you get a k value there of 432,000. And then the last part is uh, find the maximum force exerted by the buffer. So remember that the force is proportional to the displacement. Largest displacement is 1.5, so multiply the k value by 1.5 to get the maximum force. Okay, and that's the end of video two.